Hi everyone, I am back with a project share. I uh, was watching some videos and was completely inspired by Rosa Kelly Scrapbooking, it's her YouTube channel. And Rosa is fantastic. I love watching her videos. Um, if, she, if you like um, vintage and uh, shabby style projects, She's definitely your your girl. Um, she has um, just a really neat style, and I just I love everything she does. Um, <clears throat> so um, I followed her uh, tutorial that she did on some Christmas journals, um, Christmas vintage journals, and um, I have them to share with you. Um, I have let's see, I pulled out. Um, this older paper pad, um, it's from 09 and it's my, uh, it's a 12 by 12 and, um, you know, typically when I look at my older paper pads, especially when they're vintage, um, and or shabby, I'm not too concerned with the, how old they are typically because they're pretty timeless for the most part. There are some pads that have stuff that's, you know, you, the patterns you can tell. Um, this one I just saw. A paper pad the other day that just came out that had this similar pattern so I'm you know I'm, I'm not concerned with it being old or anything even though it's supposed to be old right <laughs> so I still have a bunch of um, papers um, actual sheets left and then I have a bunch of scraps that I'm planning to use for my next um, scrap and sketch Saturday video um, well not tomorrow's but the next one I think um, and then I have some tea dyed papers that I uh, worked on um, and I hadn't done this ever, and it was so much fun. I had a blast. So um, I tea dyed some copy paper and kind of cut some into strips um, to use in my journal, and then um, some lined paper that I tore from a, an old um, journal. And then um, I used some Fabri-Tac glue, some vintage photo distress ink, and then this Fiskars punch, um, corner punch, to do some of the tags. And, um, oh, and then, let me move this out of the way, I used all this, and then I used, this is the best part, it was so fun, I went through this, um, this is my little bird cage, it's too tall to stand up, um, <laughs> to show you, but it just has a bunch of little pieces of, um, some lace, and I've just got them all, um, um, wrapped around, uh, some, uh, what do you call these, ugh, clothespins. And, um, yeah, so anyway, so I was fun to go through all of this, take everything out and find the ones that I wanted to use and had a blast. So I think I'm going to be making these again and I'm actually, I'm going to be making them some more, hopefully before Christmas. Um, but for now, um, I have five here. One of them I'm going to keep and four I'm looking to sell. So let me go through those. So here's number one and they're all pretty much the same. Um, they are all one signature, um, and this the binding on it um, is the string that's off of these um, shipping tags. And by the way, I did tea dye a bunch of these. I didn't have any extras. I used them all in the journal, so I didn't have any to share with you. But um, anyway, I used the string for the the binding, and um, and then just like I said, a um, bunch of my trims and my laces. This is a cut apart. From the um, collection and um, my papers are all single-sided so I had to um, at least for the cover I um, glued two papers um, back to back so that there'd be patterns on both sides so here we go um, they're all like I said relatively the same just the only difference is that um, the pockets I might have made a little bit different um, like this one is a corner pocket um, and then I try to use some of the paper inside and I didn't do anything um, really special to any of the papers um, actually I didn't do anything other than um, ink it I didn't do anything really special to them because I kind of liked the idea of it actually being a true journal where you know, whoever buys it um, can, you know, write in it. And there's not any real, 
science or anything to it. Um, Rosa mentioned in her videos there's a lot of freedom in making these because there's no like rules. Um, you know, that's kind of the fun thing with junk journals in general, I think. But there's not really any rules and um, <clears throat> and you can kind of, um, you know, you don't have to do like worry about like, you know, waterfall things and like sometimes, you know, mini albums can get kind of, um, you know, intensive, like to work on and to complete. How cute that trim is. I just made the pocket with some of the paper. So you can kind of see there's number one. Let's see where I'll set these. I'll put this over here. There's number two. Really pretty paper. Love it. This is my favorite Hobby Lobby trim that I'm going to have to get myself for Christmas. <laughs> Love this stuff. And this is my favorite cut apart. Absolutely my favorite. Oh, and sorry for Nico. You probably saw somebody or a cat or something. Um... So just like I said, just ink the tags. Um, this is another cut apart I made the pocket from. Um, this little trim down here is from a different collection. I just thought it matched perfectly and it looked pretty vintage. So I added that there. Um, really, it was just so fun to put this together. And I tried to just make my, um, my papers, make this into a little booklet. Uh, make my papers last the tea dyed ones because I thought I'd made a lot but <laughs> when I had them here and I was trying to divide it up evenly into the five books um, didn't seem like a lot per book so um, and I just wanted to get them done like I just wanted to you know dig in and, and, do, and get these done so um, yeah, the pockets can be any size. You don't even have to stick pockets in here like this one, you know, like you don't even have to worry about, um, cute cut apart. Um, <clears throat> you don't even have to worry about, um, what do you call it? Oh, I forgot what I was going to say. Anyway, <laughs> it's been a long week for sure. Um, oh, photo mats. That's what I was going to say. You don't have to worry about photo mats, um, anything like that. It's just, you know, if you didn't want to put any of the paper in, you didn't have to. But Rosa included some in hers, and I thought that was a great idea. Um, you know, and she did include pockets on her actual tea dyed papers, and I didn't do that. Um, you know, I don't know. I One idea that she mentioned that I thought was a great idea um, is to use it as a, um, you know, a December daily um, you know, even if it's just a journal to write in or to document and you could, you know, potentially use the pockets for pictures or, um, you know, actually stick in like the little Instax photos. I thought I had some here, maybe not. Um, they would fit on here and then journal, you know, a little bit to the side. Um, don't pull all those out because they're all relatively the same, like I said. Oh, I just have to show you this paper. Look how pretty that is. So pretty. I had to make that a little booklet. So cute. So see some of these papers I just I fell in love with all over again because <laughs> this is so fun to use um, these cut aparts and just make whatever with them. It's cute lace. So that's number three. The number four <clears throat> is this one here. It's got this really pretty lace. And um, I definitely like how the Fabri-Tac um, works. It's really, um, really good, um, you know, in adhering. And it makes your, your project a little bit sturdier. Um, I, I've known um, or seen other crafters that have, you know, really swear by it. And hadn't been a big fan other than, you know, I thought, well, if I'm making a project with fabric, then I'll use it. But it works perfectly on paper um, so that's another thing I learned from all of this and next time I'll make you know I'll, um, coffee dye or tea dye some more pa you know a lot more papers so that I can maybe make some journals that have maybe two or three or four signatures um, this was just being my first one I just got so excited 
That was so fun to do this. There's that pretty paper again. So, so fun. Um, I'll cut this paper. And just all the imperfections is like A-OK. -okay. It's like almost like what you want it to, <laughs> is to have imperfections in the paper and in the fabric and the lace and stuff. It's just beautiful. So that's number four. And then let me show you the last one is mine that I'm going to keep because I just love it so much. This is um, one of my favorite papers from the collection and of course my favorite cut apart and my favorite lace. Love this so much. It's so pretty. I put it on the front cover and on the back because it's just that beautiful. So <clears throat> on this one I did my pockets just a little bit differently uh, because I was you know, I knew I was going to keep this. So I just thought, you know, I made one of the tags from the cut aparts. Um, oh, and I had to use that pretty paper on the inside. Because that's how I roll. Um, and this one I just tore the paper all the way around. Instead of cutting it just with the trimmer. I guess I could go back and do that for the others too. I just like how vintage that looked. And inking everything up. Some more lace in here little booklets like you can just do so much like you could totally go back and I mean I could guess go back and add more um, more more things in the pockets um, and I would love to do that for whoever um, buys the journals um, I could definitely go back and do that but I just I really liked the simplicity of it just and hopefully you know like I said this one's definitely if that's vintage little trim from my other collection um this one will actually i like that it's the glue and all that is so sturdy that you can um it makes the project so sturdy that you can it stands up you know i'll show that to you in a second there's this booklet tag i just love that paper so much and um you know it's just freestanding it just be gorgeous on a mantle or a coffee table or you know, nightstand or something. I just love it. I love it, love it, love it. So, um, this was a lot of fun. So, um, if you, like I said, if you haven't made this, made these um, types of journals before, you should go check out Rose's channel for some inspiration. Um, for sure, you'll absolutely fall in love with her style and um, you'll be hooked on her videos. I spent, um, I think the night that I was tea dyeing all these papers I spent watching catching up on a bunch of her videos and um, got some inspiration for some other projects I wanted to share with you um, down the road um, so anyway thank you so much for watching you guys I hope you check out Rosa's channel it's Rosa Kelly scrapbooking um, check her out and um, anyway have a great weekend and I will uh, be back tomorrow with a scrap and sketch Saturday video so I'll see you then have a good one. Bye-bye.